I'm Paramjit Kaur, um, nurse manager with ACG Care, which is a subsidiary of H Care Group. To share my own experiences as being a nurse, looking at the care that we deliver in the hospital so is very difficult to ascertain what is the journey, how, how long is it going to be, how short is the process of care going to be. It can be a very long process. Despite working in the hospitals for a while, I think uh, this is one portion that we have not really uh, planned. We look at an example of um, someone who is um, paralyzed after an accident, let's say, and they're actually a bit bound. Medical care has been done. Still conscious, you're able to see, but then you're um, not able to do anything for yourself. The long term care kicks in by uh, feeding. Someone needs to feed you, someone needs to change you, and there is no time frame to this care because it can be very lengthy and definitely not in a hospital anymore. So, after hospitalization, we still need this continuous care. And have we planned for this? So this is where uh, advanced care planning helps actually. If we had planned in advance, we would, some portion of it would at least be taken care of. So we need to think in those, in those terms of long-term care. What happens after that? Now when we talk about the advanced care planning, what actually comes to mind is uh, someone's uh, preferences, what, what would be their statement of wishes. And statement of wishes can be uh, not only medical, it can be non-medical. So how would the person want to state what they like as time passes? There comes a day when they are not in the capacity to make decisions for themselves. So what are decisions they would want people to be able to make for them? And to come to that, it has to start from uh, jotting down things that would, they would prefer to do, um, the event they are not well, or that matter, it can be finance, it can be not finance. Um, this is a very wide area, but to continue uh, to be able to record and document this, I think it's very important to be able to engage the person. It starts with the engagement, because as you talk to the person, you find that um, he may have or he or she may have made wishes, that you would like to be carried out later. But over time, due to certain reasons, things can change, so you will continue to engage, and that's where you will actually update yourself that things have changed and not go back to what was done previously. That is to share my own very personal experience. I was in a situation where I needed to to make the call to allow the person going through it to be more at peace. When it came to that, it was very important for me to actually talk to that person. What would the person like? Since we know you only have two weeks, three weeks left of time with you, what would you like to do? How would you spend those few days? What is your wish list? What is it that we can do? What is it that we may not be able to do? And being able to talk about it actually, um, for me, being the um, decision maker and playing the role where you actually need to carry that out for your loved one and being able to talk to that person, it was a full load of my head edge. It became, I became so confident and so much more at peace where I could carry out what was required by my immediate family. So that was a very late stage of advanced care planning actually because there wasn't planning prior but being able to address just those needs at that point of time and still have time to carry it out it was just so important actually so uh, looking at ACP yeah it's never never too late to start and neither is it too early actually right if you start early enough you may keep changing continuous engagement you keep changing what's required but if you're already at the very late stage it's still never too late still can engage the person and carry on what is what would the person want and you are able to do it for